I don't think I'm getting fuel. I don't see any air bubbles going through the fuel lines. Whoa! Elliot, hold on to your machine when you're doing that, you knucklehead. Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot, and today I've got a chainsaw in front of me. You probably can't see it because you're looking at me, but uh, we'll get you a good look in a minute. It is a Homelite Super XL Automatic. Uh, there's a model number on here somewhere. So it's a model number 10045C, which maybe it's like a uh, 45cc uh, saw. I haven't looked anything up on it. I don't know anything about it. But I picked it up on the side of the road for free, and I love chainsaws, so it came home with me. This saw has compression, quite a bit of compression actually. I have taken the air compressor, blown it off. It was covered in dust and wood chips and everything like that and there's no gas in it which is a good thing so I don't know why they got rid of this but we're gonna try to find out so first things first is we're going to uh, get this get this bar out of our way that way we can work on it spin it around a little easier no break on this I guess this is before safety was important which is alright, it wouldn't be my first saw without a break. Alright, let's see what it looks like under the clutch cover. Not too bad. Oh, there's a guard here. Take that off. This chain off. Alright, let's try to get this spark plug out of here. See if there's any spark. Just from looking at it, it looks like a newer spark plug too. I wonder why these people throw this thing out. Oof. Kinda kinda black. We'll go take this over to the uh bench grinder. I got a wire wheel on there. See if we can clean this up at all. Alright, we got it all cleaned up and uh you want to make sure, I like using the wire wheel on the bench grinder because if you hold it at the right position, it will actually get in between the contact points. So that is all nice and clean in there. Connect this spark plug while it's out. And the only thing you have to do to check for spark is hold it on a ground point and turn it over, which is probably going to be proved to be pretty difficult. Let's see if I can do this. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but... No spark. So, some sort of ignition issue. Take off this top cover. Dirty air cleaner. There's your carburetor. Japan. Huh. Oh, there's one issue. Fuel line's cracked. So right here, this fuel line is split right open. And it just ripped. Right in half. So that's an issue. But the uh, no spark is a bigger issue. And I'm going to take a guess since uh, there's no real access to anything where the carburetor is. I mean, it's super easy access to the carburetor. And the carburetor actually looks uh, replaced. It looks too clean. So, we'll rip off this top cover here and see what lies below. Wait a minute. Stop. Elliot. When you check for spark, did you make sure the switch was up? <sighs> See, when you're checking for spark, it's super important to make sure that the switch is on. Because if it's off, it's not going to allow spark to go through. I'm going to go eat dinner, and then we'll put this back together, put the switch to on, and then check for spark. Well, we're back. It's the next day. <clears throat> Ended up working on my Red F350 last night after dinner. But let's go back. Uh, what I've done off camera is I put this case back on 
because I forgot to flip the on off switch. So we're gonna test for spark and see if this thing has any spark. So I've got the spark plug here. It needs, like I said uh, yesterday, it needs to be grounded out. So that is resting on the muffler guard. Got really good spark. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's see if we can, this is gonna be way too hard to try to balance. Anywho, we got good spark out of this plug, so what we'll do is we'll put this plug back in. I wonder if they tossed it out just because um, the fuel line broke, which would be a shame to throw out a good saw just because you need to put a fuel line in it. So next, we have to decide what we're gonna do with this uh, this hose that keeps, it's, I mean, it's junk. So I guess since we're outside of it right now, we might as well just try to get this little uh, fuel hose off that's inside here. It's already cracked all the way down, so it shouldn't be hard to get off. And as I expected, it was not. So you can see what I'm dealing with here. This whole hose is just uh, split right down the center. So that portion's out. Now, I have to try to look inside this gas tank here and see if we can get the fuel pickup. Oh, there she is right there. Okay, all right, good. So you gotta try to fit, fish this fuel pickup out. I'm just using a pick tool, grabbing it, pulling it out of there, and hopefully, when I, I'm gonna try to put my finger inside the tank and just pull straight back on this hose so that it comes out of the, uh, comes out of the case. Well, that's not good. The hose broke somewhere inside the case. So now we have to take this grommet out and hopefully the hose stays with the grommet and we can get the rest of it out. I mean, if a little piece of hose is floating around in the bottom of the tank, it's not a huge deal because it does have this uh, stone filter on here. That looks like it's seen better days. I'm gonna try just a set of needle nose. See if I can pull this out. All right, there's the grommet. It is out and it looks like, looks like the hose actually snapped off right at the grommet, which is a good thing. It almost seems like the hose has become one with the grommet inside of there. I'm gonna grab a drill bit and see if I could twist a drill bit in there. Let's push the drill bit through. There you go. Now the uh, all the hoses out of the grommet, nice and clean. I have this fuel hose here from one of my other chainsaw projects, and I think I'm just gonna use it. And it happens to be <clears throat> the correct size. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use this piece of hose that I have left over from one of my Poland Pro's little lemon saw. So this stone filter seen better days. Uh, I don't have one on hand, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, just blow this off and see if that does anything with some compressed air. All right, we're back from the compressor. Just blow it out. Um, and that's what it looks like. What I did was actually put the compressor nozzle on this end, blew it out so you're blowing all the junk out of the filter and you're not spraying back into it. So cleaned it out quite nicely. So what we will do is get this, uh, grommet seated on here. So I got the grommet on there. So if this is the original hose, the filter was on this end and it broke at this end, we're just going to get it somewhat close, which wow, I'm pretty good guess. 
I'm gonna give it a little extra. It's not gonna hurt to have it lay down in the tank. Give it an extra half inch or so. You gotta put your hose in first. Then we'll install the filter. All right, now that it's fed in there, now we'll take the uh, filter on there, put it on the hose and drop it in the tank. Let's see. Into your little home. The filter's inside the tank. Now we gotta get the grommet back to where it belongs, which might be difficult. Hopefully it's not. It's super important you don't pinch the uh, pinch the fuel line. So we'll just take a screwdriver, go nice and easy with it. All right, now that the fuel line's in there, the grommet's back in, we'll feed it through the case. Get it up so I can grab a hold of it. Okay, and you want to make sure that you don't have any twists or kinks in your fuel line. Take your, uh, now that we got this extra fuel line here, you'll just take it, mark it with your eyes or with a marker or something to where the fuel line needs to go onto the carburetor. And grab your handy dandy snips. Give it a cut. And this might be the difficult part. You might need to use a pair of needle nose to get it in its home. Okay, fuel line is installed. So I guess the last thing we have to do is uh, put some gas in it and see what happens. I'll probably spill a bunch of this. Now, like I said before, I was lucky enough that this didn't have gas in it. When I picked it up, that could be two things. It either could have been sitting for so long that it's all evaporated out, or they thought I had far enough to empty the gas out of it. Um, that's on, choke. Well, let's see what happens. I don't see I don't see any fuel getting picked up in the line there all right we might have to take the carburetor off oh man I wonder what it would look like if we just took the top of this carb off here quick. And nothing serviceable from the top. I mean, there's a, there's a screen in there, but it's clean. Like I said, this carburetor looks brand new. It's got a Japan stamping on it, which I don't know if this is a replacement carb or if this is a home light just outsourced their carbs to Japan back in, I would assume this is from the early 90s. I don't know, I guess they could use Japanese carbs. I don't think I'm getting fuel. I don't see any air bubbles going through the fuel lines. Whoa! Elliot, hold on to your machine when you're doing that, you knucklehead. Carburetor's got to come out. And the carburetor's out. Gasket still looks great in there, so that's good. Take these bottom screws off. Take a look under there.
Let's see if we can get this split. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's in a, so this is, this little uh, pillow here is what pulls the fuel and that is shot. Well, that's gonna be our problem. This, uh, this is supposed to be flexible. It's all crunchy and munchy and junk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order a new carburetor for it, being that this doesn't seem to be the stock carburetor anyway. A uh, replacement one won't be an issue. I'll get that ordered and we'll see you guys in a couple days. All right, well, we're back at the home light today. Uh, I could not find a replacement carburetor for this thing. What I've done off camera is sucked gas through here to make sure I was getting gas flow and um, got a mouth full of gas. So we're definitely getting gas flow. So what I'm gonna do in here is just take these jets out and just make sure everything's clean before I put it back together and we give it another try. So if you're going to be doing this at home and you've never taken a carburetor apart, it's not really hard. Take everything apart piece by piece and make sure it goes right back in the way it's supposed to be. Or I should say the way that you took it out. So we've got the carburetor here. Uh, we've got one large flathead screw on top. And that is not going to come out. Let me get a better screwdriver. There we go. So you can see all that crud right there on the top. See the little flakes and stuff? That's no good. That's a uh, buildup from ethanol. So this does need to be cleaned. Oh, yeah. You can... Uh, Come on, focus. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So again, all this junk that's around on the outside there, that's no good. Got to have that nice and clean. So you take your fluid, whether that be a carburetor cleaner, brake parts cleaner, all accomplishes the same thing. And you'll just take this and uh, spray it pretty, uh, spray it pretty well. There's little holes in, that you want to spray into as well. While I've got this open, though, I'm going to spray a bunch of stuff in there too. So if you can't get this out with a hand screwdriver, it's a Phillips head. Uh, the trick to use is your impact. If you have a small impact like this, this will shock it rather than just trying to strip it out. There, it comes right out. And this needle. It looks pretty clean. So we'll just spray some uh, cleaner into the hole that it belongs in. Well, you've got it. Just make sure you give everything a nice coating in here. So then we've got this thing. I gave it some heat to try to get it back to its original shape, and it's a little better now. So we'll see if this solves our problem. Okay, let's do the uh, daunting task of getting it back into the saw. All right, throttle's reconnected. Choke is reconnected. We gotta get the fuel line hooked back up. So I guess the only thing left to do is uh, see if we can get it to run. All right, I can see it pulling fuel now. So we're just going to give it a little shot of magic start. Give it a little more. 
more sweet sauce. Let's hold the throttle open. It's definitely spinning faster than it was. Let's uh, let's double check that spark plug. See if we can get you guys a view of spark. Oh. So you can see the spark. There. We're getting good spark. We got everything we need. We got spark. We got fuel. Should start. I don't know why it's not. Let's try again. That was promising. See if it'll start again or if it was just luck. So what I'm going to do is uh, off camera carb adjustment, get this thing adjusted, see if I can get it to stay running, put it all back together and we'll see if it cuts wood. So after some adjusting I've got the uh, <clears throat> chainsaw running a lot better. It seems to idle for longer, it still needs some fine tuning so I got you guys off the bench because when it's running with it on the bench it shakes the camera. So we'll get it running and we'll do some adjustments while it's running, see if we can get it to stay running for our, indefinitely. Seems like we found our happy place. So what I'll do now is I'll put the bar and chain back on it. See if this thing will actually cut some wood. All right, the chain's back on, the bar's back on. 
This chain looks pretty whooped. If you've ever run a chainsaw, you know that a dull chainsaw is a dangerous chainsaw. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sharpen this real quick. Then we'll go see if it cuts any wood. Now for all you safety Steves out there, uh, I tried to put my chaps on, but I broke the buckle while I put them on. So we're going to run without chaps for now. We're just going to do a test cut on this and uh, see if this old saw, I just sharpened it, see if it'll cut it all. got a little more damage than I thought but um, it'll cut the carburetor needs uh, the high jet needs to be adjust if you couldn't hear how it wouldn't rev out all the way so I'm gonna go grab my small screwdriver and see if I can adjust that quick so I've adjusted the high needle a little bit see if it runs better See the exhaust smoking that's the uh, just burning all the junk out of it because it's been sitting for who knows how many years well either way the saw runs runs good got the high needle all set in now what I'll probably do is just end up buying a new chain for this this chain is all I mean it's pretty whooped so we'll get a new chain for it and uh, we'll add this to the collection well that's gonna be it for today's video I'm glad we could get this saw running hopefully if you have a project like this something I've done here will help you and uh, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Until the next one, have a good day.